sharing one of the ways that I like to make some pages to put into the journals that I make. So in this little video, I'll be using my jelly plate, my handmade rubber stamps, and various inks and fluid acrylics and even watercolor. So I am very, um, not about perfection when I'm doing these. I'm very messy and any mark to me looks good. If I even spill paint on it, I keep it. Um, I'm not a expert at using the jelly plate. I know some people do amazing, amazing work with it, but basically I just use it as a base for using my stamps and for just laying some paint down and pressing paper onto it. And sometimes I'll do some designs. Believe me, some days I do get really um, into using the jelly plate, but lately I've just been using it as a base. And here I'm just mixing a little bit of Fluid Acrylics by Golden. The High Flow is what I'm using now, but sometimes I just use the um, um, the liquid, uh, what's it called? The Fluid Acrylic, not the High Flow. Um, but today I'm using that. I'm using various inks from Liquitex. I'm using my Craft Paint which is very affordable and great for making pages. Um, the paper I'm using here is just uh, printer paper. Um, when I make my journals, I use mixed media 90 pound paper and I use um, 140 pound watercolor paper, but I'm making a few mini journals and I wanna put more pages and I can really only fit a good 24 to 30 pages in my journals with the watercolor and mixed media. And with the mini journals, I want to put, um, you know, maybe 40 or 50 pages. So I'm mixing the watercolor and the mixed media paper with this thinner computer paper. And it also gives another um, substrate that's different from the other two to write on or paint on. So of course you can use the heavier paper for gesso and collage and these could be more for using a pen or ink so I'm trying to mix it up a little more so basically what I do here is I just mix some paint on the jelly plate and quickly dab a section of the paper with some of the paint and I, I'll get a good four or five sheets out of it and I just move them to the to the side and let them dry before I do the next step uh, the eraser stamps I've had for years and years, and I started making them um, a long time ago when I found those huge six inch dollar store erasers. And I or originally started carving them with the regular lino cut where you push forward, but I didn't like that at all, and I had no control over it. I just was not good with it. And so I bought the safety, um, speedball safety lino cut for cutting linoleum um, cutter. So you pull it towards you instead of pushing it, and I just love it. I can get every curve, every design, any anything I wanna do, I can get with the safety lino cut. So I use that on the erasers, and with the six inch eraser, uh, erasers, excuse me, um, I do both sides. So I'll make one stamp on one side and turn it over and make another stamp on the other side. And they last forever, they're durable, and what I love about it the most is it's not a store-bought stamp, so no one is gonna have the stamp that you make. And they just, they work so well too. They're just amazing for making pages, and I've used them in, um, art art pieces as well on canvas and on wood and just in a mixed media or an abstract i've used them in everything i've ever created i'll go in spurts though i'll make something and uh then i'll like i'll love using them so then i'll make about a, a lot of stuff with them and then i'll put them away and i won't use them for a year or so so i just took them out again after a long time of not using them but anyway, you can use any erasers on um, the six inch, make a nice big stamp. I sometimes cut that in half. So I'll have two blocks. So that gives me four stamps, two on each side, one on each side, and then I cut the block in half. So that makes four. Um, I also use small erasers, the pack of six pink erasers for a dollar. And I also carve on both sides of them. 
and I've just had them forever. They never break down. You just throw them in a little water and let them sit for a while and all the ink comes off or the paint. They don't get fully clean, but they still are perfect for making marks. And uh, they're just so personal. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm first laying on some paint on the jelly plate, rubbing my paper over it, a section of the paper, because I don't want the whole paper covered in one color. Moving it to the side, letting it dry, then bringing the pages back in and using my stamps or even different colors from the jelly plate. So maybe I'll put some stamps on after the first layer dries, then let them dry, then bring it back for a new set of colors. So I might have the warm colors and then the cool colors. And I just, I get like a little bit of an assembly line going. I just take a stack of maybe a hundred pieces of paper and I just go, go, go. And I start running out of space. So I have to go fill the kitchen and the living room with all the drying pieces. Cause I create much quicker than they dry. On a good day though, I can put them outside and they'll dry very quickly. But I don't really feel like making the trip out to the deck. So I really just start piling them up all around me on shelves, on the floor, on the table. And then I'll have a nice stack of papers like you saw in the beginning. That stack, the first picture that I showed was basically this kind of paper and doing exactly what I'm doing now. Now this paper is eight and a half by 11 regular printer paper. So I will fold that in half, rip it and fold again. And that's the sizes I use for my mini journal. So it'll be about four and a quarter by five and a half, the journal. Sometimes I'll make them a square sheet as well. I may, I may trim them to be a square because I have a lot of leftover square um, watercolor paper from making other things. So sometimes I'll do the four and a quarter by five and a half size journal. And sometimes I'll trim it to be four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Um, but basically, uh, you can do this on any paper though. I mean, I'm sure you're all familiar with the jelly plate, but by using acrylic and mixing all these supplies on the computer paper, it actually makes it very durable. So it's kind of thin to start with. I don't really have the thinnest computer paper. I have a nice, decent weight. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe 20. I'm not sure. But after you add the craft paint, the acrylic and the rubber stamp, it makes it a beautiful, durable, but thin paper. So it's really nice to write on with pen or markers. So I love adding that into my journals. Um, I don't always add it into the bigger ones, but I love it for the smaller journals. So now I'm just continuing on. As you see, pink is like my favorite color, so somehow I integrate it into everything. And also the brayer is a wonderful tool in itself. After I put the ink on the jelly plate, I can also use the leftover ink that's on the brayer to do a few other sheets. And I've done that here as well. And I, I use my, my, I don't really use a palette. So my palette is the paper underneath. I'll use a big 18 by 24 inch palette, uh, paper underneath where I'm working. So then I'll clean all my utensils on it. And that page will then become pages for a journal. So I don't use a glass palette or a tile or I don't use any kind of palette for acrylic ink. Of course I have my watercolor palette for watercolors, but I don't use a palette for acrylic ink. And I always have a piece of paper or two or three under my work surface because I will then use that as pages for a new journal or for bits of collage in my stitched pages. I'll rip them up and stitch them onto pages. So I'll have painted pages, stitched pages, and blank pages. And I mix them all together. I usually do a third of each, so unless people request um, all of one or all of another. So if you want all painted, you can have all painted or all stitched or all blank. So most people just request a mix of everything though. So all that under paper is being used for journals as well. That's why I don't really use a palette because I don't like to waste any paint at all. I use every drop. 
Um, now after everything dries, I go in with watercolor and the acrylic paint acts as a resist. So whatever you go over with the watercolor after the acrylic paint has dried, the acrylic paint kind of resists it. So it gives a really nice effect on the pages. But again, I have about a hundred pages here. So the ones that dried with the acrylic, I can start adding the watercolor and then I have to let all them dry again with the watercolor. And then some of them are gonna be a little bit lumpy so what I do is I'll take a stack of five or 10 after they're dry, very dry, they have to be completely dry, and I'll put them in a big book and stack books on top of it. So they all get a nice, totally smooth finish when I'm done. And basically that's, that's this style of how I make pages. I, I make pages so many different ways, but this is just one fun style I wanted to share with you. And of course, you don't have to do the watercolor at the end. You could just keep going with acrylic. But my watercolors here are different um, styles. So I have on the right, the basic watercolors by Daniel Smith, Windsor and Newton. I have a whole mix of them. In front at the top is Prima um, Metallics. So they add a beautiful metallic finish onto the pages after you've done your stamping and acrylic. And the one next to that is just Prima, but a whole different set of colors than what I use from the Daniel Smith. So mixing all these on top of the acrylic and the stamp just has a really beautiful effect. It gives a nice little sheen as well as a different um, style of color. And then again, I'll add the watercolor and I might go over it again with rubber stamp again as I'm doing here. And here I'm using a black instead of uh, some of the colors that I had used earlier because I like to have a lot of black lines on my pages or black detail or um, very graphic work. I'm uh, very graphic lines so I like to go over my finished piece with black. Not all of them but some of them. And whatever I feel it needs I'll just add either more stamps. I may do a little bit more jelly plate after this. I may do some scribbling. I may use some of my Caran d'Ache um, crayons. I may use um, a brush with ink or liquid acrylic in black to add some dark detail. Or like what I'm doing, I'm just printing with the black uh, erasers. And here is like a stack of the four and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half after I've folded them and put them under a book. So they come very, uh, a nice array of different colors, designs, and then I mix them all up. And this is what I have to begin my binding them into journals. Again, I'll mix them with watercolor paper and I will mix it with mixed media, 90 pound paper. So there'll be all three kinds. I also use some black paper that I have and also some brown wrap if anyone requests that. And what I'll do is I'll just put them together in a signature, maybe five to 10, and I'll sew it up the middle. I'll just use my sewing machine and sew up the spine. And then these signatures will go into a journal. And that's just a little bit of my process and one way that I love to use all these papers to bind into a journal, a mini journal, a nine by 12, a nine by six. I've made a journal uh, 24 by 24 inches. Yeah, I did that one time. But so I make all kinds of journals and this is one way that I make my pages. I hope you enjoyed my little video. I'm so glad to be a part of this YouTube hop. Great meeting you. Bye-bye.